Welcome back to my little guided tour of how to set up and stream with OBS. In my case, I'm using OBS 24. Thank you so much for joining me. In this episode, I'm going to have a look at how we can actually capture something meaningful. So in the previous episode, we've looked at static images, moving images, setting up a webcam. So we're kind of slowly getting there. Now let's see how we can capture something that happens on our computer so that people can follow what we're doing. There's several ways of doing that, so I'm going to explain a couple of those ways. First of all, let me go and create a brand new scene for what we've got. We've Certainly we've got three scenes already, so we're amassing them right now. Let's go and click that little plus icon and create another scene, and we'll call that one Desktop Capture. Just so that I'm just going to call that Desktop, so that I, that I know what it is. We go and start out with a no sources empty scene. And I'll show you the two ways. There's technically there's three ways of capturing something that happens on your desktop. Let's go through them. So the first one is a display capture. And this is something that captures anything and everything that happens on a given monitor on our system. So let me try that. I'll go display capture. And this now shows me that. This kind of crazy because this is where people get confused because they're seeing whatever's on the screen captured going into infinity right here. It's kind of a cool effect when that happens. So anyway, I get one option, which is display one. I only have a single display here, but if you had more than one display attached to your graphics card, you could pick which one of them you'd like to capture. And as you can see from the preview, anything that is currently on that desktop will appear. That's the easiest way to get started. You can choose to capture the cursor or not. If I disable that, click OK, but uh, the cursor will only be at the bottom here. It will not appear on top of all this. Whereas when I do capture it, and this is good for demonstrations, trust me, then I can see that my cursor is also doing this whole infinity thing and it's kind of converging over here. Crazy stuff. Now, the cool thing is, of course, that I can now minimize OBS, keep it running, keep recording, keep streaming with it, and whatever's on the monitor at that time will be shown. So not the thing that's going into infinity here, but whatever's actually shown on the monitor. And that could be a video game, that could be a software you're demonstrating, or you're just your empty desktop or a web browser that you're surfing in. This is the easiest way to get started, but it's not always the most efficient to do that. So the thing is, if you use the desktop capture, then the frame rate on video games, for example, might suffer because there's quite a lot of system resources that are being used to capture the whole desktop. But it is the best way to show something if you're using multiple software. So like I use a 3D software and a web browser and an editing software, and I switch in between them in my streams. So I need to really see anything and everything that comes up on my monitor. At the same time, it's not that important to me that I have a steady 60 frames a second. That's only important for video games. So this is one way to capture your desktop. Let me show you another one and I'll set that up in another scene. Let's go back down here, hit that little plus icon and call it Game Capture. It's not only for games, it's also for single softwares that you're using. So if you're not switching away from one particular program that you're using, you can use this. And that is under Game Capture. That's literally under Display Capture. I'll leave that as Game Capture for now. And now I get the option to pick any full screen application here from this drop down, or I can pick a specific window. So any full screen application is anything that when OBS is minimized and anything that's in the foreground and displayed in full screen will be captured. Whereas a specific window will give us another option down here and will show us anything that's currently open and capturable. I happen to have Subnautica open here, so I might as well capture that and show you that. If I do that, I can see Subnautica comes up. There's a bunch of other options down here. I'll leave those as the default and click OK. And now we're capturing a game. I can now go once again, put OBS in minimized background mode, and the game will still be captured that way, or streamed or recorded, depending on what's currently active. And this behaves just like the desktop capture that we had before, with the exception that if I switch to a different app to be in the foreground, like a file browser or a web browser or whatever, this is not going to change what OBS is going to capture. So OBS is going to stay on Subnautica or on any other application that you're capturing, and it's not going to show whatever you're switching in the background there. 
Just like with the other sources, I can now go and maybe overlay my webcam to this. I'll show you another trick actually. I could go and click this source and go and click my video capture device as a source. But since I've already set it up, as a scene over here, I can go and literally add another scene to my stack. And that'll put anything that's inside that scene on top of this scene. That's kind of cool, it's called scene nesting. So let me go and pick one here, add existing. I'm gonna pick my webcam. So this is not a video capture device. This is now a scene I've set up in the last episode. I'll click okay, and there we go. It's me, full screen, awesome. But it's not just the webcam, it's anything and everything that's set up in the webcam scene. And once again, I can go and make that smaller and go and play my game. That's as easy as capturing that. Now this is only capturing the video, not the audio just yet. The so audio is a special kind of subject and there's a lot going on and there's a lot to it. And I'd like to dedicate a whole episode to that because there's audio monitoring as well as audio recording and mixing and sidechain ducking and compression and noise reduction, all that. We're gonna maybe not touch on all these subjects, but we will talk about it in the next episode. Thank you so much for watching.